I always point out to everyone that the number one thing that you have more of in retirement is time and you're going to occupy that time somehow and usually that's going to cost money. Are you ready for a successful retirement? We're addressing the topics facing today's retirees. Welcome to Retire with Ryan. Now here's your host, Ryan Morrissey. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about retirement income planning. What is retirement income planning? Well, retirement income planning is determining the amount of money that you need in retirement. It also can be referred to as paycheck replacement because what happens when you stop working? You know, one of the big changes that you have is that your paycheck stops coming in. So it's obviously very important to determine before you decide to retire to make sure that you have enough income that could be coming in so that you can cover your bills and your expenses just like you were as you were working. You know, I, I found having sat down with a lot of successful people that the secret to, you know, life, I would say, you know, one of the secrets is definitely cash flow. And, you know, this ties right back into that. You'd want to also make sure that your income plan in retirement is one that you cannot live, that it's going to be available to you over your lifetime, and that it also is going to keep pace with inflation. I use a four-step process with clients when helping to put together this retirement income plan. And I'm going to go through these steps today and, you know, help give you some action items for you to put your own retirement income plan together. So the first step is to determine the amount of money that you need. Then the second step is to analyze your income sources. Then the third step is to determine what income sources to use first. And then the fourth step would be to adjust and monitor your plan according to any tax law changes or changes in your portfolio. So I'm going to go through those one by one. So step one, determine the, the amount of money that you need. Well, how do you do that? Well, there's different schools of thought on this. You might have heard one strategy that you're only going to need 80% in retirement of what you need before retirement. That would work, I would say, if you're ways off from retiring. But if you're going to retire or you want to retire in the next six months, chances are you don't want to live on 80% of what you're living on today. I've never found that to be true to anyone I've ever met with. So what I use and think is the best way to do this is to put together a cash flow worksheet or a budget, whatever you want to call it. But it's a very detailed listing of all of your expenses now and also any changes to those expenses in retirement. In the show notes, I'll put an example of the budget worksheet that I use. But the important things that should be in your budget is you want to have a breakdown between your essential and your non-essential expenses. Essential expenses would be things like insurance, mortgage, if you still have one, taxes, car payment, electricity bills, gas bills, water, sewer, things that you cannot live without to maintain your standard of living. You know, you could put food in there as well, maybe even cable TV, your cell phone, depending on how you feel about that. And then your non-essential expenses would be things that you're, you could live without, maybe vacations or certain other hobbies or things that you pursue. You know, so you'd want to know the breakdown between both of those. And I'll come back to that in a little bit. But you'd want to add all that up and come up with whatever your number is. And that would be the number that you're going to need. And you'd also want to address any changes. Maybe you're going to have more expenses in retirement. Maybe if you're retiring early, you're going to have a higher health insurance cost or any other expense that, that might crop up. For a lot of you, you're probably going to have you know similar expenses or maybe even lesser expenses in retirement. But I always point out to everyone that the number one thing that you have more of in retirement is time. And you're going to occupy that time somehow. And usually that's going to cost money. So you want to be careful about thinking that your expenses might go down in retirement. Um, you could even, you know, increase them a little bit. And, and probably it's also a good idea to put a buffer in there just in case you're off on the estimate. So that's step one. Step two is to analyze your income sources. So what are your income sources? Well, one income source is Social Security. As long as you've 
worked in the United States, you're going to be eligible for Social Security. Even if you haven't worked in the United States, you're going to be eligible for Social Security as long as you've been married to someone who's worked in the U.S. and paid into Social Security. Pensions are another income source, right? Then you also have any savings that you've accumulated, a 401k, an IRA, anything that you know you could sell value and that you could invest. So those are the three main income sources. So let's go through those one by one, the things that you should do with that. With Social Security, you want to you know get your statement if you haven't gotten one in the mail, and you do that by going to ssa.gov and downloading your statement. And from there, a couple things you want to check is one, making sure that your income by year looks like it's correct. And then secondly, looking to see what you're eligible for. Now you could collect social security on your own benefit as early as age 62, or you could wait until 70. And depending upon whether you're married, it could make sense for you to delay your benefit up till age 70. Now, obviously if you're delaying your benefit until age 70, you're not getting your benefit for a number of years. And there's different social security calculators that you could use to figure out your break even. I have one that I use and what it usually shows is that the break even between age 62 and 70 is about 78. So if you feel confident that you're going to live to age 78 or beyond, then you should probably strongly consider waiting until 70 to collect your benefit, especially if you're married and your spouse has a social security benefit that's a lot lower than your own benefit. Because generally, the higher earning benefits are are the male benefits because males have been in the workforce longer. And usually men marry women that are younger than them. And usually women live longer than men. So in that case, it makes a lot of sense for the higher earning spouse to think about delaying their benefit at least until full retirement, if not until age 70. So you'd want to look at what your Social Security benefit options are. Next, if you have a pension, you'd want to reach out to your pension administrator or your HR department and collect a pension estimate. So what do you want to look for in the pension estimate? Well, you want to get some different options, obviously at different points that you could collect. If you're collecting your pension early, most pensions, the full retirement age is age 65. So if you're thinking of collecting your pension early, you know, what would it look like at age 60? What would it look like at 62? And you want to see those different numbers. For a lot of people, it's going to make sense to wait until 65, but that might not always be the case. I've found with some clients that they're actually better off collecting their pension early because they're going to get a higher payout by collecting it early versus waiting. So it really depends on your pension. But the other thing you'd want to look at is if you're single, it's an easier decision because you're just going to choose between collecting at a certain point and then whether or not you want a cost of living adjustment in there as well. But if you're married, you want to also look at what their survivor option would be to your spouse should they outlive you. And you want to make sure that you're probably at least collecting a 50%, if not a higher survivor benefit. Because what would your spouse do if all of a sudden they lost this income or the income from this pension went significantly down? I actually saw this in my own family. My grandfather was eligible for a pension in retirement. He was very healthy, thought he would live a long time in retirement. So he selected a, an option that gave him a very high payout, but gave a low payout to my grandmother. Unfortunately, he didn't collect his pension for a long time, and he ended up passing away left my grandmother a small survivor benefit, and she ended up living over another 20 years, I believe, after he passed away. So that really left her with a much smaller amount than she should have had. So you want to make sure that if you're going to do something like that, that your spouse is going to be okay should they get a much smaller survivor benefit. Additionally, if your pension offers a cost of living adjustment, then you also want to strongly consider that. So you'd want to look at the cost of living adjustment. You'd want to figure out what if past cost of living adjustments look like, how is it being calculated, and you know how long would it take you to catch back up to taking an option without a cost of living adjustment. And for a lot of people, it does make sense to take advantage of the cost of living adjustment. Because when I said earlier about making sure that you have an income you can't outlive, one of the ways to do that is have your income keep pace with inflation. And by selecting a pension option that has a cost of living adjustment, that can really help you out later in life. And also with Social Security, 
I didn't mention this as well, but by delaying your benefit, at least until full retirement, if not even until 70, that's also going to give you a higher cost of living adjustment every time Social Security has cost of living adjustments. So once you've gotten those estimates, then you'd want to sit down and look at them. So your next income source would be from personal savings, 401ks, IRAs, you know, any other savings you've done. How do you then turn that into income in retirement? Well, there's a couple different ways to do that. One way is to withdraw a certain amount of your portfolio. This is called a withdrawal strategy. You may have heard of the 4% withdrawal strategy. What that strategy is based on is let's just say you had a balanced portfolio. Your investments were a balance of roughly 60% stocks, 40% bonds. If you look back over the past, this portfolio has averaged over many periods of time at least 6%. So let's just say if you took out four, you're leaving 2% behind each year to increase your income for inflation. If we assume inflation's at 2%, then you'll be okay. So let's just say you started out with a $100,000 portfolio, you're taking out $4,000 a year, and the following year, you then increase that $4,000 by 2%. And you keep doing that every year. The problem with this strategy is that if you keep doing that every year and things don't work out the way you thought and you're not making 6% over time, you're only making three, then you're gonna run out of money. So the strategy doesn't really address that. The other thing it doesn't address is what you do if things work out better. What if your portfolio is making 7 or 8%? You know, We had a really strong stock market. What do you do then? Maybe you'd be leaving money behind. So because of that, I've moved to another strategy that was developed by another advisor called the Guyton Guardrail Strategy. And I'll put some information on that in the show notes. And what this strategy does is it does allow you to take out a higher percentage initially, 5.2%. But it does have requirements that if your portfolio dips below a certain percent of your initial value, you actually have to reduce what you're taking out. It also has provisions where you only get an income increase if you have a positive return in your portfolio. You don't just get an automatic 2% every year. So it is a better strategy, I feel, but you have to be willing to cut back your income if things don't work out. But by doing that, the portfolio should last your entire retirement, and it also should allow you to maximize what you can get from the portfolio. If you're going to use a withdrawal strategy, I would advocate one of those two. And another option is that if you're someone who's a more conservative investor and the stock market scares you to death, then you could use an annuity as an alternative to the withdrawal strategy. How the annuity would help you is that you'd purchase either annuity with a what's called a living benefit or you'd buy what's called an immediate annuity. So both of these, you know, have their pros and cons, but with an immediate annuity, you'd get a certain fixed amount every year and the insurance company would keep paying you that until you pass away and then when you pass away, you know, the payments cease. And you could also do this as a joint benefit between you and your spouse. And usually with these there's no inflation increase. You can buy one that has an inflation rider but they're usually not standard. With the other annuity, either with an indexed annuity or a variable annuity with a living benefit, you also get a certain guaranteed payment. But at the end of your retirement or when you pass away, there's a possibility there might be some money left over. There's drawbacks to both of these, but you probably most likely over your lifetime can get a lot more out of your portfolio by using a withdrawal strategy that doesn't use an annuity because the annuity has a cost. The insurance company has to charge you for the guarantee they're giving to you. So you're, you're going to get a lower payout and you don't have the ability to have as much of an inflation hedge with either of those. That's the drawback for both of those. But if you're a more conservative investor, this could make sense, maybe help you sleep at night. So you have to weigh the pros and the cons of that. So with any annuity, you'd also want to make sure that you're doing it with a highly rated insurance company because the insurance company is now guaranteeing the income stream to you and you want to make sure that you've done your homework on them and you feel confident. Once you've analyzed your income sources, then you'd have to determine which ones you're going to use first. And it really depends upon when you're retiring, right? If you're retiring early, then maybe you need to take early being before 65, You need maybe you need to take more out of your IRA or your 401k or maybe you need to collect your pension early. And if you're also thinking about delaying your social security, then you'd want to take more out of your portfolio. 
Then the next step would be to adjust and monitor the plan as tax laws change and as your portfolio changes. So if you're using a withdrawal strategy that we've talked about, either the 4% or the guide and guardrail strategy, then you'd want to be monitoring your portfolio and making changes as the strategy advocates doing that. But also based on the tax laws, because taxes are an important thing that we all pay into. And if you can minimize your taxes in retirement, that could really help affect your bottom line and add more to your income. So you want to look carefully, and this is something that I do with clients, at your taxes every year and look at where you're taking money out. You might have some money mixed between Roth accounts and non-Roth accounts. And it might be advantageous certain years to take some more out of the Roth or take some more out of the taxable distribution out of a 401k or IRA. Also, if you have some money in non-retirement accounts, it might make more sense to take money out of that. So there's certain tax brackets and you really need to look at what tax bracket you fall into to determine if you are pushing yourself into a higher bracket by taking money out of one account versus the next. As far as your next steps, I would say you want to sit down, you want to put together your budget, you want to look at your income sources, collect your social security statement, get your pension estimate, add up what you've accumulated in retirement accounts, and figure out if you have enough to retire. If you don't have enough to retire, there's a shortfall, right? Whatever you need on an annual basis, if your portfolio is short of that, or your income plan is short of that, then you want to figure out how you close that gap. There are some free retirement calculators out there. If you Googled retirement estimator, I don't have one that I advocate. All of them have drawbacks. I subscribe to some financial planning software that I use that can get very detailed. And I think using something like that is best, but you can use one of these free tools as well and figure out whether or not you're on track. And also if you're already retired, make sure that you're not taking too much out of your portfolio and that it's unsustainable. I hope this episode helps you to put together your retirement income plan. Please keep an eye out for our future weekly episodes. If you want to learn more about the services that I provide, you can check out my website at retirewithryan.com. Take care. You should consult a financial advisor familiar with your specific circumstances before you make any financial decisions. Nothing in this broadcast constitutes a solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. Any mention of rates of return are historical or hypothetical in nature and are not a guarantee of future returns. Ryan Morrissey, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Morrissey Wealth Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Thank you.